From a coaching perspective, I want to tell you what I'm looking for. Every coach is different, but most coaches are looking for similar things. The first thing I'm looking for are basketball players. You know what I mean by that? Can you think, can you learn a game plan? Can you adapt to a new game plan during the game to help us be successful? You guys are young, so there's not so much of that now, but it's coming. The higher you go up in, in levels of play, the more intricate it gets in preparation, film watching, and making game plans. And you gotta be able to do that. So if, if you can't do that, you're not gonna be able to be successful. And so that's what I'm looking for. Uh, and it takes discipline. It takes a lot of discipline because you gotta pay attention, you gotta learn. You also have to unlearn all the stuff that you learn for a different coach. Because every coach is different. Every system is different. And so you have to relearn after you unlearn. So the next thing is, are you a good teammate? Can you play with others? Do you share the ball? Do you try to make your teammates better? I just watched a two on two game down here while I was sitting there. All it was was one on one. It wasn't two on two. One guy had the ball and one guy was dribbling and shaking until he got a shot. See, that, that, that's good if you're playing one on one, but if you're playing five on five, you got to be able to pass the ball, make a basket cut, go screen for somebody, get somebody else open. And uh, to me, that takes commitment uh, to helping the team be better, helping your teammates be better, and being satisfied with the success of your teammates and not so much with your own success. Got that? Somebody said it, effort. Effort and hustle is about caring. If you care about winning, if you care about your teammates, then you're going to give that kind of effort. But if you don't care, you're only going to play hard when you have the ball and when things are going well for you. I'm not interested in how many shots you get in a, in a, in a tryout. I'm just interested in, in watching you play. I'm not interested in watching you dribble all the time. And that's what a lot of kids do. They think they can all this dribbling is going to get them on the team. Well, if, if I'm coaching, all that's going to get you is sitting on the bench. You might be on the team because you got some other skill set, but if all you can do is dribble and not pass, not play defense, not hustle, it's going to be hard for you to play for me. Here's something else. One of the big things about playing ball is persevere. You're going to be up and you're going to be down. You're going to be ahead, you're going to be behind. Shots are going to be made, shots are not going to be made, right? And you have to persevere. That takes character in my, in my mind. And character goes along with caring. When you have character, you're not going to quit. You're going to finish. If you, even if you lose by 20, you're going to go out there and play hard and try to finish. And I think that's important for you to understand because there, it's not always going to be easy. If only time you can win is when all your shots go in, all the calls go your way, all the breaks go your way, ball kicks off somebody's foot and bounces to you. If you can only win then, you're not gonna win a lot of games. The great teams on every level win because, why? Because they win no matter the situation. If, when I was coaching the Grizzlies, if we were down and we weren't making shots, we were gonna turn it on defense to try to not let you make shots until we could come back. Might take a little longer, but we were going to persevere and impose our will on other people. And that, those are the things that you have to learn. I gave you some sheets there, which uh, you can take along, put them in a frame, put them up over your locker, put them up over your bed, and just every day think about those things. Pick out one of those things that you're going to think about that particular day and make this all a part of you as an athlete, but more importantly, make it a part of you of who you are as a person. Because I believe you as a person being good and better is going to make you a better athlete. Because you take the things that you are as a person and you take it on the court and that's what makes you do what you do on the court. If you're a quitter off the court, you're going to be a quitter on the court. If your guy is going to die for loose balls and all that, you're going to give it your all no matter what, you, what you're doing. And that's important to understand. Oh, last thing I want to say is just uh, don't stress out about trials. Just go play. Just play. Have fun. Enjoy it.
you have to embrace the process because there's there's a lot of times where you hear, oh, there's so much pressure on so and so. You hear it in baseball, you hear it in football, you hear it in basketball when you watch sports. And, but the only pressure comes when you haven't prepared. When you're prepared and you're ready to go play, there's no pressure. You enjoy the tight games. You enjoy being down and coming from behind. That's what makes it fun, the competition, going out and competing. And that's what I would say to you guys as you're going through this, just go out and compete. When you go to your teams and trial, just go out and compete. There's one thing I've learned, I've been in, I've been in pro basketball 35 years, but I played ever since I was uh, 10 years old. No matter how hard you play, no matter how well you play, there's always going to be somebody on one night that's going to beat you. So you have to learn how to lose. And in going through the process, you have to embrace that journey because that's where you learn about who you are. All the things that I've been talking about, you find out in the journey. You don't find out in everything going well for you. And don't expect anything from anybody. Go out and earn it. I have a son, my second son. He had a car. If you could have seen his car, you would not have believed he drove it every day. It had bird poop on it. It had garbage in there. He never washed it. You know why? It wasn't his car. I bought the car for him. When he got a job, he went and bought a car. He washes it every weekend. Why? Because it means something to him. It's his car. He worked for it. He earned it. So now he wants to take care of it. Learn to take care of whatever you've been given as well as what you've earned.